Good afternoon. My name is Jack Huang, and I'm here to share with you uh, my story on how sport has inspired me both as an athlete and also as an administrator, and how it opened through equestrian sport actually opened the door to the world. I'm also here to uh, let everybody know that I'm standing in the same place here 40 years ago as a student of Dominican International School. So as you can see, that's my yearbook. And you can see that even as a fifth grader, I was already happy running around and playing a lot of sports. So uh, that's me in the background, uh, getting ready for my race on a sports day. So when I, uh, because Dominican school only went up to eighth grade, I left uh, for the U.S. to attend junior high, high school, and college. And when I got to junior high, I started running track on, at eighth grade. And then uh, beginning ninth grade, I started playing American football. So as you can see, uh, I kept, I was very active. And uh, I was also elected the captain of my track team in my senior year in high school. So sport has always been part of my life and even continued in college. I was also an NCAA track and field runner. So I ran until I graduated from college. So this is um, basically every day in college was either studying or I was at the weight room or running around on track. So even as when I gra after I graduated and started working, sport is still part of my life. And I still actively play baseball. I just came from a baseball game earlier this morning. I still, uh, I'm an avid golfer, so, you know, it's, it's been something that's been inspirational for me throughout my years, both as an athlete and now even as pleasure. But equestrian, it's also known as horseback riding, but competitively, how did I get into this sport? Uh, as you can see, Taiwan is a very small place. Not many people even know we have horses. So how did I get into this sport? And actually, it was because of my family. If you take a look at the picture on the right, on the, yeah, that's my father. He's 85 years old, and he still rides every week. But he didn't do this for fun. He actually started out doing this as a therapy, because about 40 years ago, he had a disease, an ailment called uh, bamboo spine, which meant that his spinal column uh, inflamed and then chronically and then in the end it fused together so basically as a result of that he was in a wheelchair or no crutches so he was incapacitated so he was in, at the hospital during uh, for quite a while and afterwards doing therapy so just one day he was walking through a park and saw people riding on horseback and thought that this was something that he could do and miraculously within six months he was off crutches, he was off a cane, he was off of, um, off of a wheelchair, and also off painkillers. So this has been a miracle for my family. And because of the success story, our National Equestrian Federation, the Chinese Taipei Equestrian Association, wanted this success story to be promoted to the rest of the Taiwanese population. So they asked him to come on board as a executive director, executive board member of the federation. But at the same time, he also volunteered me for a job uh, because I knew my English proficiency was very good. He uh, volunteered me to be a member of the administrative staff and to be the international director. So um, what's in, what does the international director do? Well, first of all, uh, I'm in charge of all the emails back and forth with the, na with the other national federations and also with the continental associations and also with the international federation, the governing body called the FEI, the Federation Equestre Internationale, that's French uh, for International Equestrian Federation. So what I do is that they have general assemblies every year, they have an annual meeting, so, which what I would attend. So basically I would attend uh, two meetings a year in places around the world to share our knowledge, to see how the rules are discussed and passed, and at the same time, to also learn that what the future of the sport is bringing us. But at the same time, I was also c competing. So actually, it was, it was a great combination to be able to compete 
and to also be able to be involved in the equestrian community. Then uh, be becoming a member, attending, having attending all the general assemblies, I was soon uh, discovered by one of my peers from uh, Asian Equestrian, uh, Equestrian Federation. And he was the president of the federation and came from the Samsung group. He noticed that my English skill was something that could really help the federation in terms of uh, organizing meetings and also uh, the paperwork, the reports to the international federation. But pretty soon, I became a board member. I was writing their statutes or constitution for the Asian Equestrian Federation. And that's where I started gaining um, exposure and also started making new friends as they started knowing this person from Taiwan with the ability to help the Continental Association. In the same time, I was attending the International Equestrian Federation General Assemblies and also being involved in uh, shaping the future of sport together with other members and discussing how we can move the sport forward. So my big break, my first big break came in 2010. After three years of trying, I actually successfully bid and was awarded the hosting right for the General Assembly in Taipei, Taiwan in 2010. And the importance of this meeting, it was an election year. One of the, the incumbent candidate, Her Royal Highness Princess Haya, was seeking re-election. So it was great to have an Asian to be at her home turf to run this election. So she came to Taiwan and together I helped her uh, with all the uh, right, meeting all the right people. I successfully helped her with their campaign and she actually won the uh, election in a landslide. So this was actually a big, big surprise to everyone. And after that, uh, we became really good friends, and even till now. So the Christian Federation is very special is that it has a lot of royal families. So what made this General Assembly 2010 special was that in the size of the number of countries, it was the first time that Taiwan had over 100 countries with participants participating. Secondly, many of these people are either from the royal family or they're from their government officials, high rank government officials. We had ex-premiers, we had secretary of defense, we had prince, princess and sheiks from uh, Asia and from Europe. So this is actually a event which all the eyes were on Taiwan and also my big uh, break to the world and opened the door to the world. So as you can see at the uh, award gala ceremony, uh, I was re received the prize from Her Royal Highness Princess Haya. And after that, we continued to become friends. And in 2011, I was actually asked by her to be on the FEI Audit Compliance Committee. I became an auditor. So that was my second break to ha have my, to open the door to the international equestrian community. So having been an audit compliance committee member gave me the opportunity to learn the whole organization of the International Equestrian Federation and to learn about the sport. So I did this for four years and I was finally asked again by Her Royal Highness to run for this time a board member position called the regional group chair. So the regional group chair for, for Asia region to tell you how big it is. It stretches west to Pakistan, east to Japan, north to Mongolia, and south to New Zealand. So it constituted two continents and 63% of the world's population. So I never thought I had a chance. I was running against two other candidates, one from Japan, who was going to be hosting the Tokyo Olympics, and the other one was the incumbent uh, chair who was from Singapore. Both countries have much better developed equestrian sport than us, so for me, it was a long shot. But with help from my colleagues, with help from Her Royal Highness Princess Haya, I actually won the election. So in 2016, at the General Assembly in Tokyo, ironically, I was elected the group chair of the region and became a board member. So as you can see, uh, that was my first board meeting. They actually sent this to a message around and said that new kid on the block, and that was me. 
On the bottom of the picture, you can see that uh, in the center is her royal highness Prince Hyatt. She had already re uh, stepped down from her role as the FBI president, but she flew in all the way from Dubai to attend my inauguration and also the gala dinner together with the FBI president. So this was a very special and touching moment for me. That's you know a good friend, especially someone from royal family who I just you know became friends with, came all the way out to celebrate this with me. As soon as I became a board member, I started getting busy. So as you can see, I started running around. Um, I was in, in Jakarta for the Asian Games. I was in Uzbekistan for the children's uh, uh, international competition. I was in Turkmenistan uh, another, for another games. I was in the world championships in, New in North Carolina. And then I also went on audit trips to exotic places like Mongolia and North Korea. And I've been to 53 countries around the world, and half of it was because of equestrian. So this was definitely a great opportunity and a great sport to be involved in. Then, because of my busy schedule, uh, the FBI president took a, a special notice to me. And in 2019, in General Assembly in Moscow, he actually proposed me to the, be the FBI vice president and that was where I was also elected unanimously by the board. So um, the president himself and myself are very unique in that both of us are the first uh, president, vice president that are not from the royal family. So it shows that the sport is modernizing together also with our transparency and our governance. And it, the person in front of me clapping his hands was the one, the vice president I was succeeding he was the sheikh, the royal family member from Bahrain. So I'm the first one that to be in the position that's not from a royal family. So now being the vice president, again, I continue to use my passion, not only to talk about the sport, to promote the sport, but also my passion to tell people about Taiwan, where I'm from. Because how could you imagine that somebody from Taiwan where not many people don't even know we have a horse sport could be a member in the International Federation with all the royal family members and at the same time being able to promote one of the sports that my father, that gave my father a second life. So the, every opportunity I get to give, provide an interview, I will always grant. As you can see, I was interviewed in Uzbekistan. I was interviewed during the Asian Equestrian uh, Championships in Pattaya by CNN and also by the Japan, Japanese media. I was in New Zealand in, also for a uh, inter international competition and received a uh, interview there. So this, these are the things that I continue to do passionately and that allows me to travel around and also to tell people that I'm from Taiwan. So uh, again, sharing with everyone what sport has inspired me to do. At the same time, I want to tell you that you also have the same opportunity. Because participation in sport is not just as difficult as you think. You know, you can participate as an athlete, a team manager, or even just a spectator. I opened the door to the world, not as an athlete. I was, I was an athlete in the past, but I, you know, I became part of the world equestrian family because of my administrative part of the uh, knowing the sport. Then, but the most important thing is that all of you have to have the willingness to try and to enjoy. You may not be good at it, which is fine, but at the end, you're going to be healthier. Okay, what are some of the keys to success? First of all, be passionate. I'm always passionate when people talk to ask me about sports, about equestrian sport, or ask me even about Taiwan. You know, I'm a passionate person to talk about these topics. I'm proactive to go meet people, to say hello, to introduce themselves. I'm from, to introduce myself, I'm from Taiwan, and that I'm the FBI vice president. And they will look at me with a surprising eyes that, wow, someone from Taiwan is the vice president. It's better to give than to receive. My first break with the Asian Christian Federation came because of my willingness to help them to do their report, to write their report, to do their 
constitution. So they, in return, realized what my abilities were and were able to introduce me to the other people, to the other communities, to the international uh, community. Be an ambassador. Okay, you have to be an ambassador for the sport, for the organization. And remember that you're where you, wherever you are, if you're representing Taiwan, you are an ambassador for Taiwan. Dress with a flair. Okay, always be overdressed rather than underdressed, but with a flair, so that someone across the room can pick you out from the crowd, and they will remember you. This is, has played an important factor for me in, at the FBI when I'm meeting people that they can pick me out from the crowd. I'm always one with the best tie, they say. So it's great. Uh, last, but most importantly, always wear a smile because smile always opens your door. Thank you.